Um, by getting tumor testing, it just opens up different options for you, uh, especially in terms of target therapies and then for potential clinical trials that you might be eligible for. I think the two main tests right now that would be most linked to potential benefit from therapies are EGF receptor or EGFR and ALK. Now you can get those tested through either academic centers or potentially commercial uh, molecular laboratories. Uh, so if you're in a community practice, you know, your doctor should be able to have you sent to a commercial laboratory for testing. There is a lot of other mutations that uh, potentially could be examined as well. Uh, most of those are in um, what we would call uh, under study in research. Now, some of those mutations may make you eligible for specific uh, trials, which could be a benefit. Um, but it, as a standard, you may not necessarily need to get all of those uh, mutations or markers tested for. It's talking to the physician and feeling comfortable that when you talk to your doctor that you're getting an honest answer from them and be able to say, is there anything else I should be tested for? I, I heard that there's special targeted treatment for lung cancer. Should I be tested for it? And if not, why not? And that gives the doctor an opportunity to say, well, it would require another biopsy, and that's probably not the right thing for you. We need to get started. Or to say, well, that, that's a great idea. Let's go ahead and get that testing sent off. Um, or to explain why a particular individual doesn't really fit into a group that's likely to have that test result come back positive and therefore not the best choice for them. Unfortunately, the way it is is patients may have to do some legwork in trying to get their tumor tissue out from the certain hospital. Um, from a pathology laboratory to get it to another facility for testing. Uh, what we found often is that the delay for testing uh, can be just in getting the sample from the patient's hospital rather than the actual tumor testing itself. A lot of patients come to me with either just a cytology diagnosis, so diagnosis just made from pleural fluid, uh, so where a physician just drains off of off the fluid, off if someone has a large amount of fluid between their lung and their chest wall. Sometimes we can get a diagnosis from that, from that specimen. However, it's a very small amount of cells. Um, so that's important to know, and that's what we look, look at. So cytology versus a biopsy, where they take a big chunk of tumor, and that is usually labeled as surgical pathology, where they actually are able to take a biopsy. And that usually can only be done through a bronchoscopy, or if there is a tumor on the skin, we can resect, resect that. Um, so it's important to know those two sort of things. Is it a, just cytology based on fluid cells, or sometimes you can take a very small needle into the chest or into the tumor mass and pull, suck out the cells. But again, usually that's not enough cells to be able to do further testing beyond just what type of cancer that you have. Um, so that's when we start running into problems trying to explain to patients, well, we don't have enough cells for a patient to be able to sometimes even tell what subtype that they have. And then lastly, you know, whether or not we can do particular testing such as the epidermal growth factor mutations or things like that. It's taking a, cult a little bit of a cultural change uh, in different in hospitals to uh, recognize the importance of getting people's tissue sent out very quickly. Um, you know, patients can keep on top of that or their um, caregivers, uh, you know, and keep asking the doctor. Uh, they can even go to the pathology department themselves uh, and actually get the tissue themselves and then bring it over. You know, we don't want to burden people too much, um, but those are different options that are possible.